Welcome to this Friday Faith Moment in July. If you remember, and I almost forget because it's several weeks ago, I felt the Lord said to me that I needed to get back to having a goal, a spiritual goal, just like I used to do when I worked, when I was in business. I've called this week's Faith Moment Pause. P-A-U-S-E. Pause. Why? Because sometimes you start to let your brain get ahead of where the Lord wants to take you. And then you get confused and then you have to stop and just, not drift, but just let the Lord direct you quietly for a few moments till you can move on again. Now, if you remember last week, I discovered a picture that had been hanging on the landing wall, gathering dust. Not for eight years, but just for the time I'd been in charge of cleaning upstairs. And it was that picture of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that Tracy gave me when I was ordained. And it's as if the Lord has taken me back to that. He showed me the, the righteousness, the oak of righteousness, planted and what a glory to behold. That's what we are. We're oaks of righteousness, glories to be held, to behold by the Lord. It's him who beholds us. I want to just reflect a bit longer on this passage from Revelation. But before I do, I just want to read to you this little bit from the beginning of Revelation. After this I looked, and there in heaven a door stood open, and the first voice which I had heard speaking to me, like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place. At once I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne. John, when he wrote this, must have been heading towards 90. The emperor Domitian had exiled him to the worst penal colony out, the island of Patmos, a beautiful island now. But then, all the vegetation had been stripped from it and the worst criminals were placed there. And because Domitian hated John, he was put there. He was in a cave. I visited that cave. I'm sure some of you have visited it. Where he had this incredible vision it went on for 22 chapters. It must have taken him, I don't know, the best part of six months to a year to actually write it all down, to record it all, to remember all the things that were suddenly before him. Incredible pictures, like this picture that we had, that we looked at last week, that I'm looking at again just kept looking at it all week and then heaven opened and a white horse appeared with a rider called Faithful and True and in righteousness he judges and makes war his eyes alike the flame of fire and on his head are crowns diadems and his name is the word of God and he wears a robe dripped in blood 
and from his mouth comes a two-edged sword and on his thigh has written the words King of Kings and Lord of Lords It's only mentioned three times in the Bible King of Kings and Lord of Lords If we skip back two chapters it says and they made war on the Lamb but the Lamb the Lamb of God will conquer and those who were chosen will wear pure white linen and ride with him in that chapter 19 the people who followed the rider they wore pure white linen and they were faithful now the interesting thing the third sorry the screen keeps going backwards and forwards I don't know why it goes slightly dark here it's in the evening but it's the third is quite fascinating really because it was written 25 years before John's revelation and as I say there's only three places in the Bible where it says King of Kings and Lord of Lords doesn't appear in the Psalms or anywhere like that this appears in Paul's letter to Timothy his first letter chapter 6 I urge you Paul talking to Timothy to pursue righteousness there's that word again righteousness godliness faith love endurance and gentleness I command you and I command you to keep this commandment of mine so that you may be blameless, pure, unblemished on the day of our Lord's return. For he is truly the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As I start to think about what my goal is then the word righteousness must be in it but equally this word white purity back in 1992 we as a ministry team and I was only a junior member of it went to Littledale Hall and right at the end of that ministry over a weekend over an Easter weekend would you believe that we all went as a team we had communion we shared communion and a young lady from from Sheffield said to me as she gave me communion she said I believe the Lord is saying that he's given you permission to tread among the holy things of God I pictured myself as a bull in a china shop me I would just career around smashing everything that's so precious but the fact is holiness is the strongest thing that there is because God is set apart 
is holy. As I've sat and thought about it this week, I realise that there's one thing that I've stopped doing, and this has got to be part of my goal quite obviously. I don't know about you, but I've stopped putting on the armour of God. I've let it slip. I always used to put it on every single day, once a day. I would say I put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace I put on my feet. I receive salvation as my helmet. I pick up the shield of faith and the two-edged sword of the Spirit. To receive salvation as my helmet. And I always pray in the Spirit. So I started doing that again. I'm making sure that I put my armour on each day. I've stopped pleading the blood of Jesus as well over my family. That's terrible. When did that happen? I used to say every single day, in him I am redeemed. Through the precious blood I am redeemed. And he has lavished his blessings upon me and upon my family. And more than that, he has justified me that I am saved from God's wrath. And do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives within you? You're not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Here we are. Twelve minutes has gone already. Until I speak to you again next Friday.